Today I'm going to show you how you can use Google's new AI studio to build useful apps. I was able to, in 10 minutes, build an app that clones existing Facebook ads for any brand, and I was really blown away. Let's just do a little tour real quick, and then I have a little bonus at the end where I show you a useful little Python script that I made in the AI studio too to do some video editing. Um, so here's what I started with. I'm just going to talk it through. So build me an app that accepts an image as an input, a brand name, brand description, target audience and newsletter location, then it will clone that static ad to create a new Facebook ad and there should be checkboxes to select either feed placement, it'll generate a square image, or reels placement, it'll generate a 9 by 16 or both and it'll generate both. Use Gemini for the image generation. And I'm using Super Whisper to dictate all my typing, it's super great, I totally recommend it. It's free. Okay, here we go. So this probably looks pretty familiar. It might look like Replit or Lovable. It's got the prompt over here on the left. Uh, we can see the code right here and the preview is gonna be over here on the right. And of course it's using Gemini under the hood. Super good for coding, super fast. I was blown away the first time we did this. So I'm excited to see what we get here. I'm pumped, this is so cool. So for some context, I run this newsletter, the Arlington Bagel. I need to update this because it's almost 5,000 now. And I run ads that, or I did, I used to, these don't convert well anymore, but they're the only static ones I have examples of, uh, but they're very basic. Just a AI generated person with some text overlaid and the brand name. And we're gonna try to clone this for my buddy's newsletter, the Wilmy Weekly, go follow him, shout out Nick. This is Nick, he runs the Wilmy Weekly. Yeah, we're just gonna see what we get. Uh, I've done this before and I run into some challenges where because it sends the image to Gemini and says make this as similar as possible, it'll replicate the text, but it, it won't necessarily change out like the brand information. That's the main problem that I'm trying to solve. We're gonna see if we can do it here on stream. If we can go from, let me see, so this is the one I made yesterday, I can show you in here. But this is what the ads look like. And so I'm having trouble getting it to replace this with Wilmington and this with Wilmy Weekly, but otherwise it's super useful. And I think if you're putting in non-branded uh, static ads, it would do well. I also think you could, maybe we'll try this, do a version that strips off all the text and just gives you the same static image with like this overlay and this filter. And then you could just add text yourself, but you know, ideal solution. Wouldn't have to go into Photoshop or Figma. Okay, so we got something, looks pretty good. Let's give it a spin. Okay, so here's brand name, Wilmy Weekly, local Wilmington NC events newsletter outgoing 25 to 45 year olds in Wilmington sign up for free weekly email. We're going to choose feed as our placement. We're going to click go. I So I haven't figured out yet if there's like a log somewhere so we can see what's kind of going on behind the screens, behind the scenes, I should say. Chat got your tongue right there. Mm, no, I don't see a log, but that's okay. We'll just let it do its magic. Let's see. Okay. So that's not bad. You can see it's misspelling Arlington. Um, let's roll, let's roll one more and see what we get. But okay, I kind of, I kind of glossed over how crazy this is that I just spoke for 10 seconds, clicked create this app, and it made me this working app in, I, I don't know, two minutes. Okay, so the text is still a little messy. We, we may be able to kind of refine this with prompting. Uh, you know, maybe this is a kind of way to make variations of your own brand's ads instead of copying other people's. So you could just put in an existing ad like I did. Let's actually try that. Let's, um, let's, let's hit refresh and clear everything out. Let's add my existing ad, Arlington Bagel, Arlington, Virginia events newsletter. And I noticed, I don't think it spit out the nine by 16. So maybe that doesn't work. Anyways, back to what I was saying. I really glossed over how amazing this was because I did it last night. And so I knew, you know, I described the prompts, for, you know, I dictated it in 10 seconds and then it just built this app. And because it's in Google's AI studio, it knows how to plug in automatically with Gemini. So you don't have to mess with any API endpoints like you would if you were integrating open AI into like a replit or lovable, like no API keys. You saw super fast, super super quick to a prototype. Like I'm pretty blown away by this. Okay, we somehow got something worse and there's stuff in, looks like not English. So let's say, let's refine the prompt. Go ahead and save this. My output has lots of text. It also has lots of nonsense words. Let's refine the prompt to make sure it only generates 
words from the inputs and that they are English words. Maybe we should add in a step where Gemini parses the input image and all the text inputs and then creates a prompt to send to a new Gemini in order to generate the image. I need you to decide if we will get a more consistent usable output if that second Gemini has the input image and the generated prompt or just the generated prompt. Consider that the input image might be confusing it and it might be making it too similar. And I don't know why I typed all that when I could have just used Super Whisper to dictate it. I'm still getting used to that workflow. I like it. I think I get like 15 minutes of dictation a day or I don't know if it's monthly, but it's a really cool tool. And anyways, I, Gemini uh, or AI Studio by Google. I don't think I'm paying anything for this. I think this is free. Uh, I haven't deployed anything yet. And, and I'm wondering how I can get this code out. I guess I would download it, download the app. What does that do? Okay. Give me a zip file. Yeah. With all the code, GitHub sync would be cool. Okay. I understand. Instead of directly using description, I guess we should play around and just see and hear how we can get a good prompt. Clone this Facebook static image. For the same brand, Arlington Bagel, make the text exactly the same. Don't use any gibberish text. All text needs to be English and match the text that's in the input image. This is for a Facebook feed ad, so it should be square. Okay, we're back to the app. Okay, so it's using our new prompting strategy. Wilmington, North Carolina events newsletter. 25 to 45 year old fun loving people in Wilmington. Subscribe for free. Whoa. Interesting. So it did an ad and then this text. I actually like this. Okay, it looks good, but we need a way to download one image that includes the generated image and the generated text. And it needs to still be square so it can be a feed placement. I think after we test this one, let's just try deploying and see what happens. And then I'll show you the script that I made with Gemini. I do like that it's showing everything that it's thinking. <laughs> this is so funny. It's very conversational and how it talks to itself. I'm now fully immersed. I'm currently working. So I guess they have like some prompt that says, what are you thinking right now? Update us on what you're working on. It's funny. Okay, theoretically this should work. I'm worried though because I don't know if it's gonna be the right size because uh, Imogen is going to generate a square image and then it's gonna add that text on the bottom. So it's gonna make it not a square. Local Wilmington, North Carolina events newsletter. 25 to 45 year old people in Wilmington. Sign up for free. Okay, let's generate. So this is the final test run. We're gonna see if we get something good here. If it doesn't work, we're not gonna make it. <laughs> Generating your amazing ads. I mean, all of this is so smooth. Knock on wood, we haven't really had an error yet and all the animations look great. So I don't know if you guys can see this. How can I show this to you? Google Docs. So this is what it generated. This really isn't bad. I think if we just move the text so that it's not overlapping. I think that's a pretty solid static ad. I wonder if we can use VO to generate video in these. Let's just really quick try this. Make me an app where you input a Facebook ad video. It'll be Reels format, so nine by 16. And then we use VO to generate a copy of the ad for the brand details that we enter. Uh, while this is loading, I'm gonna show you real quick this script I talked about. So this is me just prompting back and forth with regular Gemini in, uh, in chat here. And I probably didn't do this right. Like I could probably do code execution. Can you make me a Python script that says hi and test it? I think there's a built-in way to have it run code, but I was just prompting back and forth here. <laughs> cool. It tested it anyways. So we're going to run these real quick. This is a clipping tool. So the idea is you put in long form YouTube content as a video, and then you upload a transcript file with timestamps. It's going to use an algorithm, not even AI yet, just an algorithm to find like exciting points in the script. And then it's going to take three of those and clip them into 10 to 30 second clips. And I've got another one set up, but I cheated. I used ChatGPT for some of it and it'll pick random ones. 
This one will do the same results every time. And then the cool thing is I've even got a cell that overlays text for captions and that part's not fully working yet, but I've got it adding text overlay from the transcript, which is so cool. You know, there's tons of SaaS companies that charge you 50 bucks a month for something like this. And I was able to clone like a pretty good version of it in a couple hours last night. Now I did stay up till 4 a.m. It's pretty cool what you can do with uh, Gemini. And this is Google Colab. So this is where you can create Python projects. Uh, if you haven't worked with Python, it's a little different than working with like a React app. Oh, I need to upload these videos. Hang on. So you can see all these test ones I did and see how late I stayed up. Okay, here's the MP4 and here's the SRT. The SRT is the transcript file. I got that from Descript, which is a video editing tool, but most tools should be able to get you that. Also in like a future version, I would want it to kind of parse the audio and generate that itself. And I kind of got a version of this working in N8N, but just not the clip generating part. In N8N, I was able to get something working where when I upload a YouTube video, uh, it pulls the video and the transcript and puts it into N8N, and then it finds places in the transcript to clip. That's how far I got. But it, and it generated captions and stuff for different social platforms, so that was cool. Okay, anyways, let me show you the script real quick, and then we'll get back to our final app. We're gonna get all these errors that don't matter. Okay, you can see it found some keywords, and like, I don't know why it thinks the words like also and pull, or it puts a good one. I don't know why it thinks like some of these random words are notable, but it's pretty cool. You can see the snippet that it's pulling from the transcript. And I tried to get it so that it only clips like after punctuation. So it's the start of a sentence. I don't know. I think maybe the solution is just do higher quantity of like random clips. And then you might just find one that works because sometimes if you clip in the middle of a sentence, it's a good hook because there's like no context, but like a little bit of context, I guess is the idea on the left. You can see it's building these videos and this is gonna take a second. And it pulls the audio too, because it's trying to, this is for the captions. It's trying to match the transcript because the transcript is only as granular as like five second bursts. So I may get a full sentence or two in that time. And then for the captions, you know, that's too many words on the screen. So we need more granular like captions that are like three to five words, like quicker. So that's what it's trying to do here is get more granular by analyzing the audio. But I'm, I don't really think it's working properly right now. Okay. I'm, it's done with some of them, but I'm not sure if I can touch them yet. How, how am I going to show these to you? Can I, can I paste them in Google docs again? The old classic trick. So we download one of these. See if we can put this in Google Docs. Or maybe we should just do like Notion. I'm a big Notion hater, by the way, but I do have it. Let's go here and bet this so you guys can see it. Let's see what we got. Okay, so I guess I didn't run the thing to make it nine by 16 and add captions, but this is what we got. This is a clip. Okay, also I just realized I'm not recording my desktop audio, so you guys can't even hear that. So that was silly, but okay, that's that. that I mean, what you saw was it, it pulled a 20 second clip uh, something kind of interesting from an 11 minute video and it pulled three of them. So I think the way that you learn to build these things, right? My process for like solving this task was I had this thing I wanted to solve. I tried to do it in N8N first because there's lots of guardrails and not a ton of coding. Then I got to a point where I kind of understood the workflow and the actual like process so well, like, okay, we need to do this. Now we need to cut this. Now we need to do the captions like this and save it. I understood it so fast that N8N was just slowing me down. So then I went to Gemini and started using code because you can code way faster than you can drag and drop stuff around in N8N and you can click a button to test versus doing the trigger like I was doing in like Google Drive. So that's kind of my process. And then I think the final step would be maybe trying like in Replit to do this. Replit can do like a Python backend, like React front end. So that would probably actually be really good for this use case. Of course, like it's, it, if you're uploading, you know, 20, 30 minute videos, it's gonna use a lot of bandwidth on your server. So that's what makes these tools expensive. And Google Colab's great because it, you have unlimited bandwidth, right? I, I think, I mean, I've never hit the limit. So it's really good for testing versus like, if you're testing, if you're repeatedly uploading like a 30 minute video into Lovable or Replit, it's gonna use even a lot of that development um, bandwidth. So be warned. We're back in AI studio. We have way too many things. Okay, we tested this version. I wonder why this took me into Gemini instead of building the app. We are going to take the app that we made and just deploy it. 
Okay, so we need a Google Cloud project. So if you haven't used Google Cloud, it's really clunky and annoying to use, but it's very important. This is where you can set up things like Google Auth and APIs so that you can pull from like Google Docs or Google Sheets or your YouTube account. It's really useful. And I guess I need to use it to deploy. So let's say AI add tool. Let's create it. It's gonna take a second. And I need to be careful. I feel like I'm probably getting billed for these. Let's maybe give this a refresh. Oh, it's not saved. So you have to click the save button here, which I think is totally weird. Yeah, okay, let's try deploying it now. Oh, we gotta set up billing. Boy, there's lots of steps. Okay, I'm gonna go do this in the other screen so I don't expose my credit card information, which is something that I love to do. You've reached limit of projects on which you can enable billing. Oh my goodness. You can request a billing increase quota, and it's literally a Google form where I have to plead my case to increase my quota. This is just the crazy stuff about working in these different tools is where the friction is. So like Replit or Lovable or Bolt or whatever, they want you to deploy so you can share it with the world right away. But Google's like, no, you got to jump through our hoops. We have tons of money. We don't care about you. We don't want you using our servers or burning so many servers just running YouTube and Gemini. So I think we're going to be stuck there. Interesting. This is the video one we did. So let's just do this real quick. People walking outside towards a food festival. Local events newsletter for Arlington, Virginia. Young professionals age 25 to 35. Weekly in your inbox and free. Dang, that was fast. I'm thinking this looks like it's not using VO, their video generator, probably because that's expensive. So it doesn't have video generation like it does image. All right, well, the more you know. Okay, guys, this was AI Studio really quick. You can make some really cool stuff. So tweet at me if you make anything cool in here and if you have any ideas. I definitely need ideas for things to test in here. It's just really fun. Peace.